Adam, that's right. As many of us know, it's fairly simple to purchase a gun in a store here in Ohio. But did you know if you purchase a gun online, even from a different state, the background check is done in just minutes. Masked and wearing a bulletproof vest, it's been five days since 24-year-old Connor Betts opened fire on a crowded street in the Oregon district in Dayton. His gun, similar to an AR-15, legally purchased and not considered an automatic weapon. The AR-15 was developed in the 1950s. Have we had this problem since the 1950s when these firearms first came out? Bet's presumably pulling the trigger 42 times, unloading 42 shots in less than 30 seconds, killing nine people before he was killed by police. Betts got the gun from an online dealer in Texas, a common practice. In this case, the Texas dealer would have shipped the firearm to a federally licensed dealer here in Ohio. Anyone can buy a gun online by choosing what they wish to purchase and paying for it. The dealer can be anywhere in the United States. Then it's shipped to a local federally licensed dealer who reserves all rights to refuse to give the purchaser the gun for any reason. The final steps include calling the purchaser to pick it up and a background check is done that day. And as long as the FBI and the dealer approve. 95% of the time, from the last statistics I heard, the checks that are approvals go through instantaneously at the time they're on the phone with the FBI. They walk out with the firearm. Too often in these situations, we get to looking for someone or something to blame, and 100% of the responsibility is with the person who decided to commit this criminal act. Where exactly Connor Betts picked up the weapon he used during Sunday's mass shooting, we do not know. Dayton Police Chief Beal saying the gun, though legal, may have been modified. Well, it wasn't sold in that, in that final condition. That has some level of modification to it. Betts' gun included a 100-round double drum magazine. Nine states have banned this type of ammunition. Ohio is not one of them. And the purchase of ammunition does not require FBI approval. We all want the same thing. We want to live in a safe and productive Ohio where we can raise our kids and send our spouses to work. But the fact of the matter is, is that no matter what we do, if we woke up tomorrow in a fantasy land where every gun had magically disappeared, there would still be people out there committing violence. Again, Betts did get his gun legally, but the question still remains for many. How did he fire so many shots in so little time? That may be a question we can never answer. For now, reporting live in Dayton, Alex Taylor, Dayton 24-7 Now. Alex, thanks. And in our exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Governor Mike DeWine, Dayton 24-7 Now's Alex Taylor talked with him about his proposals for changes to law that he discussed during his news conference on Tuesday. Among them was a proposal for safety protection orders that would give families and law enforcement the power to take away firearms from those who they feel may be a danger to themselves or others. In certain cases, there's emergency orders that can be filed. Would this be something the the immediate take away of their weapons for if the family says or law enforcement says we want to take away their weapons or we want to protect this person from themselves? Would it be an immediate emergency order or would there be a waiting period? There, there, there would have to be a hearing. And what we provide in here is that the judge would we would hope he or she would hold the hearing right away, but they would have to hold it within the first hearing within three days there would be a determination about whether to take the guns then. Then there would have to be a second hearing uh, within a 12-day period of time. So again, due process built into it, but we hope that the judges would, you know, particularly with a great emergency, move very quickly.